I always thought Etrigan and Jason Blood were cool characters. Whenever they pop up in animated DC projects, I'm usually excited to see how they're going to be used. The Demon Within was my first exposure to these two, and while it's a magic-laden departure for the often more grounded new Batman adventures, it didn't feel out of place. I really enjoyed Batman and Robin's dive into these supernatural situations. At a Gotham auction house, Bruce Wayne and Tim Drake sit in for the selling of an ancient branding iron. It's said to have been originally used by the Aetherian era witch, Morgan Le Fay. In the audience, two parties go back and forth, bidding extremely high amounts for it. One of the parties is a peculiar looking child named Clarion, sitting with a mischievous smile on his face and a cat in his arms. The other is a man named Jason Blood. When Clarion seems to have strongly outbid Mr. Blood, Bruce steps in. One million. Oh, million. Bruce wins the bidding war and immediately hands the prize off to Jason Blood. The two are apparently friends. After a vague threat from Clarion, Jason invites Wayne and Drake back to his residence to catch up. There, a curious Tim asks about one of Blood's grotesquely fascinating pieces on display. It's Merlin's demon, Etrigan. He summoned it to defend the realm of Camelot, Merlin's home. When Camelot finally fell, Merlin decided to merge the creature with one of King Arthur's noblemen. It looks like you, but that'd be impossible. You'd have to be over 1,500 years old. Clarion's cat, Teagle, then slips in to quietly steal the iron. The trio catch it in the act and wrestle with the feline to regain possession of it. When Teagle magically transforms into a humanoid creature, Jason fights fire with fire. Gone. Gone the form of man, rise the demon Etrigan. Eventually, the cat creature is able to get away with the iron, leading Clarion to immediately perform a spell. Ancient Morgan, I beseech you, from what is one, do now make two. This separates Etrigan from Jason and puts the demon under the control of the witch boy. With the bond broken, Jason begins to rapidly age as Clarion wreaks havoc on Gotham in the company of his new heavy. Etrigan and Clarion were created by Jack Kirby in the early 1970s, and just by looking at them, you can tell. The idea of Etrigan being bonded to Jason in Arthurian times made for intriguing lore that they expounded on a bit in the characters' next DCAU appearances during Justice League and JL Unlimited. I like the attention to detail shown here as Jason ages. He has five distinct models that show off his decay in different stages. In addition to that, the transformation sequences for the demon and Tikal are well animated, very deserving of some recognition. TMS was behind those services, with Atsuko Tanaka directing her second and last TNBA episode. The magical nature of this story gave the creative team an opportunity to use more surreal visuals. Batman stepping out of this brick wall, duplicates of the Dark Knight bursting into bats, and this Bat-Groot combo were fun departures from the usual. The composition of Batman in front of the full moon doesn't have any supernatural elements in it, but damn, it's a great shot. His leaping down from the building after with Shirley Walker's music underneath is peak Batman atmosphere. Clarion is a decent villain for Etrigan's debut. I love how the witch boy taunts Jason whenever he sees it. We do have a way of bumping into each other, Uncle Jason. How'd you ever get a brat like that for a nephew? We're not related. For some reason, it amuses him to call me uncle. He's a cocky little imp that can be creepy and intimidating when unhinged, but he's also just a kid. There are a few scenes that highlight this, such as when he has Majin Etrigan destroy a movie theater. I hate sequels. Do it. <laughs> it's also pretty funny when the kid has his demon look through the contents of an ice cream truck. No strawberry, master. There's nothing as good as strawberry. Nothing. They break into the aptly named Kirby Cake Company soon after, just for the child to gorge on sweet confections, including that tasty... rock cake. This is Clarion's only DCAU appearance, but he's shown up in other animated shows and video games over the years. Both Jason Blood and Etrigan are voiced by Billy Zane. That's right, the Phantom himself! He didn't return for the character's future appearances, but he did give both personas, especially Jason, a sense of prestige. Zane and the actor who voiced Clarion, Stephen Wolf Smith, were actually both in Titanic together. Stephen played a very small role there, but you could call this a reunion if you wanted. Unfortunately, this was his last acting role, as he passed away in 2000.
Because of the spell, Etrigan can't resist Clarion's commands, and mayhem reigns upon the city. Batman arrives to try and cut off the boy's chaos, but dueling spells from Clarion and Jason keep the Dark Knight neither effective or seriously harmed. The kid orders the demon to go after Mr. Blood, who's casting these spells from his apartment as he quickly ages toward the grave. Just before Etrigan breaks through a magical shield to end both Tim and Jason, Batman swipes the iron from the evil child, merging man and demon together again. The witch's evil now undo. Make the one from what is to. After Bruce brands the cat, rendering it helpless, the newly refused entity show up to reflect Clarion's sorcery and trap the brat in a crystal ball. We see that Jason keeps it on display in his home, ending Batman and Robin's magical adventure. I like the Demon Within as something different for the series. It's structured, animated, and acted well. Stan Berkowitz's script felt like a precursor to a tone we would see more of in the Justice League shows. Considering he was a creative force on both those programs, it only makes sense. Give it a watch or rewatch, and behold some of that rare bat magic. Don't ask. Just don't ask.